welcome NutritionRadio.org listeners. This is Lonnie Lowry, the university nutrition professor of over 20 years and podcast host of long-running shows like Iron Radio. Come on in. Fitness Fridays. Okay, welcome everybody. Fitness Friday. Today I'm going to take a different kind of tack and we're going to talk about something uh, that's not usually talked about in fitness, I think. It's about loneliness. We don't have a guest this time, so it's just me. That's sort of ironic. Loneliness associated with unhealthful diets and physical activity among U.S. college students. So this is a study that came out. Uh, the date I have is just literally about two weeks ago. Brand new stuff. Uh, it says college students reporting a higher level of loneliness also reported a higher level of sedentary behavior and low activity. Now, if you think those are the same, I wouldn't blame you for that, but the idea here is that uh, sedentary being really like no movement. As a quick sidebar, the researchers did say sedentary would encompass household activities, maybe walking to the bus, things of that nature. Um, uh, this this is partly through Science Daily and partly through uh, the university itself. Uh, interestingly, I, say, I think Science Daily makes a good point that they talk about transitioning to a new environment. If you ever moved and tried to go to a new gym, uh, what was that like? You know, that sort of thing. Are you more of a lone warrior type in the gym or do you like a training partner? It brings up a lot of these sorts of questions. Uh, it says, Li Jiang found that loneliness was related to altered diet quality and physical inactivity. Here's a quote. Our study supports the potential need for further research related to loneliness an emotion that impacts many college students. And of course, not just college students or not just those in a new environment. Uh, some of the data here, sedentary, 19.2%, and low activity, 53.8% behaviors, were more frequent in students reporting high loneliness scores. That is, they sort of ranked them on a scale, scores ranging from 4 to 6 and 7 to 9, uh, compared to those who were reporting loneliness scores of 10 to 12. So importantly, this is a cross-sectional study. It's not causal. They didn't induce loneliness in people, right, and then have a control group that had a lot of support or anything like that, of course. It's just sort of cross-sectional stuff. And associations, as we know, are not cause and effect. Um, now, just to be uh, as thorough as possible, uh, I went to the source, J Journal of American College Health, and this was published at the very end of 22. So here it is, again, Journal of American College Health 2022, very end of the year. And again, loneliness is associated with unhelpful diet behavior and physical inactivity among U.S. college students. Now, there's not a ton more here than there was in the news reporting. It says the objective was to evaluate dietary and physical activity behavior in relation to loneliness among college students. 264 students were included in the analysis and those with loneliness scores of 4 to 6 or 7 to 9 on this 12 scale had higher fat diets than those who scored 10 to 12 on this loneliness scale. And another sidebar, if you think that's opposite or backward somehow, uh, you may be right. It doesn't really agree with earlier research about stress and fat intake. It may be because of the duration of their food frequency questionnaire compared to earlier researchers, something like that. I've personally never been a big fan of food frequency questionnaires anyway. Um, their conclusion was that in this sample of college students, loneliness was related to altered uh, physical activity, uh, diet and physical activity. In fact, here's a quote for you that's buried deep in the paper in the discussion, and I wish would have been uh, more prominent in the abstract. It says, also, female students reporting higher loneliness scores were more likely to consume higher amounts of added sugar. Now, I believe that is in line with some earlier research. Now, you might ask yourself, over the years, is this something that you've done, emotional eating? Um, sometimes I've used diet and physical activity as a treatment, in a sense, for emotional distress and, and for different mental health kinds of things. Um, I was always, just personal disclosure, one of those people who, I like the lone warrior approach. I've never liked training partners. It's nice to have somebody you know in the gym to give you a spot that you can trust. Um, but I've always sort of liked the idea that I go when you know, my nature calls me to. I would lift in the morning early, sometimes, sometimes uh, midday, uh, whatever it might be. Move to a new location, it was a way to deal with it. I know that when I moved up to the Minnesota-Wisconsin border there, uh, 
and this is all during the iron radio days we, we recorded without interruption but um the training and actually contest preparation was something that really kept me sane. I'd get up very early and go exercise at the gym from like 5 to 6 a.m. kind of thing, just doing my my fasting cardio. I never liked the term cardio in, in that regard because I was just walking uphill. I didn't want to mess up my workouts later in the day. But again, it was a it was a focus that even with my new job, with some people, they don't like layering a, a lot of stuff on top of it. They, it interferes with their readiness to train. In fact, that's a topic we're going to talk about in coming weeks. But uh, to me, it was something that helped me actually deal with that. I remember Franco Colombo saying something along those lines when he was, I think it was when he was training for a, his Mr. Olympia comeback, something along the lines of his training helped him deal with all of the chiropractic work that he was doing and that sort of thing. So again, I, I would sort of have you be introspective and call on yourself to say, well, you know, how has this affected me? How has, has loneliness affected you in some way? Do you rely on social support either to train with a training partner or maybe at home. Um, I had a lot of su emotional support at home because of my wife, but um, to me, thank goodness, she wasn't um, an intense like uh, fitness competitor herself. And before anybody tries to make us think, I have huge respect for female athletes, fitness competitors. I've trained some myself and they've really kicked ass. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's a certain tension already. You're hangry, things like that. And when both people are doing it at the same time, it can just be very stressful. I, I've seen couples break up over that kind of thing. Some people can do it, of course. And again, maybe that's something we can address in the future as well. But that's the kind of stuff that just looking at this material, I thought we would take a new angle this week and look at you know, emotional and mental health. Uh, science is clear exercises medicine and that's for mental health as well things like anxiety depression other things uh, not always just by itself of course there are other treatments but um, again just a different angle uh, for us to discuss this week so it's short one this time but we'll see you next time uh, on uh, nutrition radio the nutrition radio.org podcast is for informational purposes only if you're interested in starting a diet or exercise program Check with your physician, nutritionist, or qualified exercise physiologist in order to make the progress that you need.